Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You can find all the work that I do on my links listed over on Instagram under Robin underscore Norgren or under UBU for Life. I'd like to start with some words from a book called Spiritual Direction by Henry Nowen. Because it is so difficult to listen to God's call and obey, we need help in the form of disciplines and practices. Discipline in the spiritual life focuses on the practical side of spiritual formation and is the active companion of belief. Belief, giving your heart over to God's existence and activity, precedes spiritual practice and formation. But belief will be deepened and strengthened by regular spiritual practices. A spiritual discipline or practice is a way of creating some open and free space in which God can move and speak. For example, the discipline of solitude helps us spend time with God alone and so become aware of the divine silence. The discipline of community helps us to let God speak to us through others. Both solitude and community are the disciplines of prayer because in both we try to listen to God. All the disciplines of the spiritual life are intended to help us to move from an absurd life to a listening life of freedom, joy, and peace. A block of marble cannot carve itself. It needs a sculptor. An athlete needs a personal trainer or coach. Likewise, a person of faith will certainly benefit from a spiritual director. We are all very susceptible to self-deception and are not always able to detect our own fearful games or blind spots. How do we know that we are not deluding ourselves, that we are not selecting words of scripture that best fit our passions, or that we are not just listening to the voice of our own imagination. Who can judge their own heart? Who can determine if their feelings and insights are leading them in the right direction? It is too easy to make our heart's desires and our mind's speculations into the will of God. We need someone who helps us to distinguish between the voice of God and all the other voices coming from our own confusion or from dark powers far beyond our control. We need someone who encourages us when we are tempted to give it all up, to forget it all, and to just walk away in despair. We need someone who cautions us when we move too rashly in unclear directions, or hurry proudly towards a nebulous goal. We need someone who can suggest to us when to read, and when to be silent, which words to reflect upon, and what to do when silence creates much fear and little peace. Through the discipline of spiritual direction, we explore, in the presence of another wise Christian companion or two, God's claim upon our lives, and what has been, and what may be now. We recognize God's activity and again say yes to the direction in which the Spirit calls us. The direction might be fearful or even quite radical, but we might also be surprised to see that the call of God is a call that is very attractive and that we are able to respond to it because we are being drawn by a loving force. A spiritual director is someone you ask to hold you accountable for exercising the disciplines and practices of the spiritual life. Spiritual direction, the ancient practice of provi- and provision for receiving such needed help, offers prayerful presence, wise counsel, and careful guidance by a spiritual friend who is sensitive to the movements of the spirit and familiar with the disciplines of the traditions. A spiritual d- director in that strict sense, is not a counselor, a therapist, or an analyst. 
but a mature fellow Christian to whom we choose to be accountable for living our spiritual life and from whom we can expect prayerful support in our constant struggle to discern God's activity. A spiritual director can be called a soul friend or a spiritual friend whom we trust to offer wisdom and guidance. The way we relate to our spiritual director depends very much on our present need, our unique personality, and external circumstances. Some people may want to see a spiritual director bi-weekly or monthly. Others will find it sufficient to be in touch only when the occasion asks for it. It is essential that one Christian help another to enter without fear into the presence of God and there to discern God's call. Spiritual direction and therapy or psychological counseling often appear to be one and the same. We are very familiar with words such as conscious and unconscious, depression and regression, frustration and defense mechanisms, dysfunction, addiction, and codependency. Psychological terminology is used more frequently in our society in our society than spiritual words such as atonement, resurrection, sin, forgiveness, and grace. However, if you simply remain in the psychological world, if you raise only psychological questions, you will get only psychological answers when your heart needs spiritual wisdom. During a period of history in which many traditional structures and ways of living are breaking down, and we're thrown back on our own personal resources and insights. The need for spiritual direction is increasingly apparent. How then can spiritual direction be offered and received today? Ideally, everyone would benefit from having a personal spiritual director. It would be a mistake, however, to think exclusively about individual spiritual directors. It is important that we start to think about a ministry in which we help one another to practice spiritual disciplines and thus live in such a way that we become more sensitive to the ongoing presence of God in our lives. What finally counts is not just that there are good spiritual men and women in this very chaotic world, but there are communities of Christians who together listen with great care and sensitivity to the one who wants to make this healing process known to all people. Many people today are asking religious leaders, communities of faith, and wise friends to help them find their way through the complex labyrinth of contemporary living. They are asking, how can I become aware of God's presence in my life? How can I have some assurance that my decisions about money, work, and relationships are made in a spiritual way? How do I know that my life is lived in obedience to God and not just in response to my own impulses and desires? For some people, these questions become very specific. Should I live a simpler life? Should I change my ways of eating and dressing? Should I take a more prophetic stand on issues such as war and poverty? Should I give a few more years of my life to work with the poor? Such questions seek companionship and discipline in that they require the ability to listen to God's voice. They reflect the areas of our lives where God is at work, sculpting our hearts in surprising ways. Kelly Ray Roberts, in her book, Taking Flight, says, In the spaces between who you are today and who you are becoming lies a truthfulness, a unique sensibility, that if expressed in your creations will document your life in progress while making a deeper, more meaningful connection with those who view your work. It's true. You have a story to tell. You can tell it quietly in the nuance of your conversations and creations, or you can tell it boldly. Either way, by sharing part of yourself, you're honoring where you stand today while seeking your truth as you become more, more whole, more honest, 
more of yourself. As you learn to dance and reach and grow toward the best parts of yourself, your art wants you to dig deeper, to seek your truth, to share it. Here's a real truth. We are enough, right where we are today, in spirit, in creativity. We are enough, where we stand in this moment, in this life, in this body, as beautiful, messy, and confusing as it may be. Let's talk about it. Let's let's express it. Let's create it. Let's be real and honest and truthful about where we are today and where we hope to go. It's possible to express all of this in our art, whether it's journal making, painting, beading, or quilting. The finished work may not have an obvious truth, but you will have created a deeper meaning and will have spoken more intimately to those along the way who see your creations or hold them in their hands and feel the connection, the universal yet personal message you have expressed. Occasionally, I'll get an email from a friend or colleague expressing disappointment that no one seems to be purchasing their work. I really tried to think about what other people would want to buy, and I'm a bit disappointed as to why my pieces aren't selling, they'll say. To me, trying to make artwork based on what we think others might want is just one of the many, many ways we cover our truth. I say make the art you want to make. Make it meaningful to you. Use colors and elements that you are in love with. When you do this, you'll speak your truth, sharing your own unique vision with the world. Nobody else would have created it the way you would have created it. Try not to worry about what you think other people would like because chances are they'll respond more to your truth more than your assumption of what they might or might not want. How then can you deliberately express more of your personal truth in your creations? The first step is to acknowledge what it is you're trying to express. If you're not sure, try revisiting some of the things we tapped into before. Are you feeling called to express a newly revealed whisper or fear? Or maybe even a joyful memory? Perhaps you'd like to express a newfound insight you've discovered by seeking the sacred and the ordinary. Or maybe your creative truth simply wants to express sincere gratitude for its awakening. If you're still stuck, try thinking about the last piece of art you saw that really tugged at your soul. What was it about that piece that struck you? Could the answer be something you'd like to express in your own creations? If you're still struggling with acknowledging what personal truths you'd like to express, then try just free writing. The act of putting your thoughts in writing may get your creative spirit thinking of new ways to express itself. Whatever the case, It's important to draw your truth from your vulnerabilities and your inspiration. What is influencing your work at this very moment? What is inspiring you? Here are some thoughts from my book, Deepen the Way You Live Your Life. Every journey starts with a separation a leave-taking, a realization that the place you are right now is a place where you can no longer stay. Justine Musk The choice to part ways with a bad idea, a wrong decision, a friendship, or a relationship is difficult to say the least. Many people ascribe to the cliche when someone makes her bed, she needs to lie in it no matter how uncomfortable the bed has become. And in some cases, the decision to stay in the situation can potentially bring deep lessons that have far-reaching value. But 
Is there a decision that you are facing right now where you know you need to make peace and let go?